So this is my most asked question. Basically, people ask, which is the best detector? The Nocta Legend, the Equinox 800 or 900, or the MindLab Manticore, or the XP Deus 2? And as far as which detector I think is best, that's not really how I approach the situation. I have no interest in trying to prove one detector is superior to the rest and then throw the other detectors in the trash like some of these other YouTubers do. And then, you know, declare myself, you know, Team Mind Lab or Team XP or whatever. You won't see me declaring Detector X as the greatest thing of all time and then wager my whole reputation upon that and then do a series of bias tests trying to prove that statement true. That's, that's not what I'm interested in doing. So if you're, if you're, but if you're wondering which detector you should buy, then you should keep watching this video. What I'm interested in is using all of my tools to their maximum potential. And I do use all of my machines. That's the point of me doing testing is to increase my knowledge and understanding of each machine, not to figure out, not to declare one as the best or declare one as like superior to the others. Quite frankly, I just love learning new machines. I like to swing them all. And I think I get the most advantages by combining all of those tools to work together as one. I really think that the differences between those detectors, like the differences in raw performance are very marginal at best. A lot of these testers can come up with artificial scenarios that show a slight advantage for one detector over another detector on very specific targets in very specific conditions in these very particular tests in their particular environment, etc. But you know what none of these testers can show? You know what none of these testers have? They have no abundance of evidence showing that there are targets out in the wild that one, one of these detectors can hit that the others simply cannot. If one detector is way better than another, where are all these videos? Where are all the videos of them swinging over a target with one detector and it getting it, and then swinging over with the other detector and it totally missing it? They don't have this evidence for some reason. And quite frankly, that should be the only evidence that really matters at the end of the day. If one was way better than the other, then it should be trivial, trivially easy to find these targets in the wild that one hits and the other does not at all. But all they have are these targets that they've selected beforehand, buried beforehand, some nails set up on a piece of wood that they tested beforehand. They don't have any real evidence. And actually, I spent a, I went after this evidence. I spent a large portion of last season comparing targets specifically between the Equinox 800 and the XP Deus 2 <clears throat> in an attempt to capture on camera targets that one could hit that the other could not. I simply couldn't find any. I tested roughly a thousand targets in the wild. And these were targets that like, I'm not talking a surface coin. I'm talking things that I thought were, you know, had the, the potential of being masked or that were really deep. And half of these were found with the XP Deus 2 and the other half were originally found with the Equinox 800. I couldn't find even one, one target where one detector could hit it and the other could not when using the same size coil. There are a few targets and a few situations where I would say one detector did a slightly better job or gave a better audio response indicating a target was present, but the other te detector was always able to hit it. <clears throat> and that's a thousand targets. So I can confidently say that the odds of you missing a target because you bought the wrong detector is well below one in a thousand. Well below one in a thousand. I mean, statistically speaking, if it was meaningful at all, I would have found at least one. But I spent, I spent the whole summer looking for one and I couldn't find one. I even compared a bunch of signals with my friend who swings the Nocta Simplex, which is considered a budget detector. Granted, a very good one. If you're looking for a, a first detector, it should be the Nocta Simplex, in my opinion. And mind you, I swing in heavy iron, like difficult conditions. And I never was able to once find a target that one detector hit over another. And that's including the Simplex in that data sample. I didn't, um, my friend wasn't present for all of this testing. But whenever we were around and we found a sketchy target or an interesting target for whatever reason, we would just compare signals because it's fun to do. And not once did we find one that one detector hit that the other did not. 
again, there was a few of these targets that I thought the top of the line detectors gave a better target ID or gave a better tone than, the, say, the simplex. But again, it, was, it demonstrates that the odds of finding a wild target that one machine can hit that the other cannot is incredibly small. I wouldn't quite go as far to say it's zero, that there's no differences, but over any single hunt, over an entire detecting season, you probably won't encounter many of these situations at all. I couldn't find one. I couldn't capture one on video. I tried, but I just couldn't do it. So what a lot of these testers and what a lot of these uh, companies love is the idea that if you buy the wrong detector, or if you don't buy the best detector, then you're gonna be missing stuff left and right. When in reality, the odds of such an occurrence are so small that it's not statistically significant and you won't notice it, it won't hamper your ability to find stuff. It honestly isn't really as big of a factor as these people want you to think. Well, then you might ask, Lauren, why do you keep buying all of these expensive metal detectors then? The truth is I just love learning new detectors. I love the hobby. I love the fact it gets me outside, it gets me exercise, all those things. It's fun, I enjoy it. But the more I swing a variety of detectors and compare wild targets, the more I have to come to the conclusion that the differences in performance are so small that so long as you don't buy some piece of crap, and mind you, there are bad detectors out there that you shouldn't buy. There are bad detectors out there that will miss targets. But if you're buying from a reputable company and you're buying their top of the line detector, you're not gonna miss targets. Like if you set up your machine correctly for your conditions, for your hunting style, for your for what you're going after, you're not gonna be missing targets because you bought the wrong machine. As far as the things that determine your success as a detectorist, which machine you buy is pretty low on the list, assuming you don't buy some cheap Chinese piece of crap. So ultimately, which detector should you purchase? Well, you should get the one you want and stop worrying that you might make a bad decision because among the XP days to the Equinox series, the Manticore, the Nocta Legend, you really can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong even with the Nocta Simplex. Now there are some things to consider like, you know, I wouldn't use the Nocta Simplex, say in a saltwater beach. You should consider which style of audio that you like. If you want to go scuba diving, it seems like the XP Days 2 is the right selection. You should consider their coil selection. As of the moment, the XP Days 2, while the 9 inch coil is great on the XP Days 2, the size and shapes of coils that you get with the XP Days 2 is incredibly limited. They're expensive, very expensive. <laughs> you know, like the Equinox series has a whole, a whole variety of coils. It's a proven platform. There's third party coils you can purchase. You know what I mean? You should be considering things like this more than you should be considering, you know, which, which one unmasks the best, which one's the deepest. They're all very close in that category. You should ask experienced detectors in your region, what detectors are they using and what are they having success with? You know, if you're doing some niche style of detecting, like, exclusively going after gold nuggets, then I would do a little more research and figure out which one is doing best on gold nuggets. Typically mine lab machines do the best on like tiny gold nuggets, you know, and mineralized gold fields, stuff like that. But if you're just looking to metal detect and you're doing general metal detecting, you're gonna do a little bit of everything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried because not a single one of these YouTube testers has presented a meaningful body of evidence, or really any evidence at all, of one top tier detector finding targets that the others cannot. They can't do it. I couldn't do it. I tried, like I tried to capture even one on camera and I couldn't do it. And you'll notice something about these YouTube testers is they do their testing beforehand, before they turn on the camera. And they outright state that over and over and they don't realize <laughs> how much that ruins the test. Like they don't, they don't have a grasp on sound scientific principles. They don't realize what, what that really says. 
because if they do their testing before they turn on the camera, that means they're going to adjust the parameters until they get the result that they want, even if they're not doing it on purpose. Like, they're literally doing the scientific method backwards and working towards the conclusion they want. I can set up a test to prove any detector beats any other detector by adjusting things ahead of time. You know, swapping out targets, moving stuff around, all of that stuff, changing settings. This is what they're doing whether they realize it or not. I don't think they do it on purpose to mislead or lie to people, but they simply don't have a grasp on sound scientific principles. I don't think they're liars. I don't think they're con men. I don't think they're getting paid to sell a detector or any crap like that. But they, they simply don't realize how difficult it is to conduct a scientifically valid test that is designed to minimize the impact of their own biases. And keep in mind that these testers ultimately have the power to decide whether or not to post a video. So that alone is like extreme selection bias. If they don't like the outcome of a test, they can simply not post the video or they will alter the test parameters or settings on the machine until they get whatever result they want. And, and I will, uh, I will accept that challenge. If you want me to prove any detector beats any other detector in any category, I can provide you a video, pr you know, proving that. And, <clears throat> and something important to keep in mind is that everybody is biased. If they start out their video by saying, oh, I'm not biased then they're deluding themselves and they're deluding you. Everybody is biased. Biases act upon us without us knowing it, without us being aware of it. Our monkey brains will concoct crazy rationales and reasoning as to why this particular test wasn't valid or why these objects need to be swapped out or moved or why one detector should be on this particular set of settings, etc. A good scientist will actually assume they are biased and then attempt to design the test in a way that prevents their own biases from acting upon it. That's the purpose of a double blind experiment is that it's also important for the scientists themselves to be blind and not know who is getting to placebo so they cannot exert their own biases upon the experiment. That's the whole purpose of that. Now I understand it's incredibly difficult to, to design such an experiment. So I don't blame anybody for, you know, not doing it or not being able to do it, but keep in mind these detector companies and these YouTube testers are exploiting your fear of missing out. Or in this case, it's fear of missing a target. Because the fear of missing out makes you buy a detector. The fear of missing a target makes you buy a detector. The f and all of these things also make you watch these testing videos. Because <clears throat> that's the ultimate result of these testing videos is that leaves you worried of like, you want to watch it because you think, oh man, I hope I didn't buy the wrong detector and I'm missing targets. Or if you already bought a detector, then you go watch that video and it confirms your detector is the best. Then you think, oh good, I made the right purchase. This proves I won't be missing targets like these other detectorists. So I really want to avoid that. I want to keep my videos more about learning and improving as opposed to declaring the best detector and then saying stupid shit like, I wagered my whole reputation on this being the best detector ever. And if I'm wrong, well, you can you know, drag my name through the mud or whatever. <laughs> it's so stupid because once somebody declares, like once somebody publicly declares one detector is better than another or declare or wages their whole reputation on such a statement, expect everything they post to be incredibly biased. How could it not be? Like <laughs> if you wager your reputation on a particular outcome, then of course everything you do is going to be serving that particular outcome. Like. <laughs> And these are the same people that go on to say they have no biases, which is bullshit. Everybody has biases, myself included. If you, th if you think you aren't biased, you're deluding yourself and your audience. No human is capable of shutting their biases completely. And anybody who thinks they can, it's simply being operated upon by their biases without them knowing it. So ultimately, don't buy any old technology. Don't buy any cheap crap from China. If you buy any of these top of the line machines, you cannot go wrong. I know this type of content won't get me the subscribers or the view counts that these more controversial, you know, test videos will get because they're tapping into your fear. You know, if I post a video saying detector X is better than detector Y, then you'll get views from everybody who owns detector X because then they, 
feel really good about themselves that they bought the right detector and then you'll get to views from everybody who bought detector Y because you'll be tapping into their fear that they're missing targets. And then it turns into a whole debate. And then you get into these, you know, pissing matches of like, no, this detector is better than that detector. You're stupid. Your tests are stupid, blah, blah, blah. And then they go back and forth. And quite frankly, YouTube loves that drama. It gets lots of views. If you want to grow your channel, that's the way to do it. If you want to grow your channel, come out and say Detector X is the best ever. And I wager my reputation on it. And I challenge anybody to prove me wrong and blah, blah, blah. You'll get way more views. You'll get tons of subscribers. You'll get tons of comments, which then promote your videos and the algorithms. <clears throat> Just keep in mind that all of these top tier companies have access to the same physics, the same technology. They all reverse each other's reverse engineer each other's detectors, decompile each other's code and learn from one another. And at best they make small and small advancements, small improvements, perhaps a few new features. So ultimately just buy the one that you think best aligns with your desires and needs and just go have fun with it. Remember location matters way more. If there's nothing in the ground, it doesn't matter what you're swinging. I wouldn't give weight to any of these above ground tests. They should be a tool to learn the detector, improve your technique improve your understanding. It shouldn't be about declaring one detector as being better than another because you can put down two nails on a piece of wood and put down a particular target and then move them around before you start the video until you get the result that you want and then post it and feel really good about yourself because, oh, you're the, the one who said this was the best and you've proved it and now you're spreading that truth to everybody and everybody can get the best detector because they watch your videos and sorry, but I think it's all bullshit.